So let us start with the Q&A session. There's quite a number of questions. Okay, before we start the, uh, yeah, before we start, just to remind you, my internet tonight may not be so stable. So, it, so I may have to log out and you may have to come in again. Or I have, because maybe I have to change internet, change the Wi-Fi or so. Anyway, all right. Let's share, let's share the screen. Huh? Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. This is the question. Hmm. Bante, yesterday before my mother was going for her operation, in my mind, I did make a vow that if my mother successfully goes through the op, I will observe eight precepts for a week and immediately after her op i'm now observing the eight precepts but not as perfect sometimes a bit delay in lunchtime till 12 45 pm is this vow considered rites and rituals uh, needs pandes clarification okay <clears throat> now okay we'll, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about it yeah now here this 12 45 pm uh, uh, for Malaysia is for for sorry for Peninsula Malaysia, it is not over, not over the noon time yet. Yeah. For example, like in Malaysia, like in Peninsula Malaysia, the noon time. Let's say for today, uh, let's say for today, what time? Let me see. Yeah, today it's uh, one twelve p.m. Yeah. The noon time is ex is at a one twelve p.m. Now I like, I cannot say it for those who are in Kuch or in Sarawak or in the in Sabah that 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 time is a bit nearer to twelve o'clock. Yeah, but for Peninsula Malaysia is not. Yeah, so Peninsula Malaysia, sometimes it can reach up to about twelve. Oh, uh, sorry, from twelve about twelve fifty at the earliest, <laughs> until about. 130, 139, almost 140. Mm. So it's going to be quite late in Peninsula Malaysia, the noon time. Nah? Okay, so that, that you don't worry about that 1245 in Peninsula Malaysia, since I know that you are in somewhere in Peninsula here. All right, okay. Now, we talk about the virtue, about this. we talk about the sila. Mm. Now, you said that uh, your mom has goes through or successfully goes through the op, which is very good, wonderful, you know, excellent to hear that. And um, hopefully all the best for recovery and, and so on. But uh, now you say that you want to observe the eight precepts for a week. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So in this case, uh, in this way, Sometimes we have that type of Chinese mentality. Yeah? The Chinese mentality is that um, we want to, for example, we want to gain business. Yeah? Then we go and ask the Deva, the ask the Ang Kong, you know, Tiao Tang, you know. Then after that, you have to repay back. Yeah? You have to repay back for, for, for this kind of things. Right? Now, when, when we say that when we repay back, in this way, then it becomes in a way tainted. The precepts, the observation, observing the precepts is tainted. Uh, tainted because of our emotional attachment. Here, of course, when we are, you know, when we come to our parents, and sometimes many of us are very attached to them. When attached to them, uh, a lot of things, Dharma, we don't realize that a lot of it being tainted when it's connected with them. Uh, let, 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 let me show you something. Uh. She got, you got another question, but uh, let me show you something first. Uh. Okay. Limited virtue. Okay, there's limited virtue and unlimited virtue. 
Now, limited virtue is that seen to be limited by gain, fame, relatives, limbs, or life. The opposite is unlimited. And this is said in the Patisambhida Magam. What is the virtue that has, li has a limit? There is a virtue that has gain as its limit. There is a virtue that has fame as its limit. There is a virtue that has relatives as its limit. There is a virtue that has limbs as its limit. There is a virtue that has life as its limit. Now, what virtue has gain as its limit? Here, someone with gain as cause, with gain as condition, with gain as a reason, with transgress, transgressors, a training percept as undertaken. Okay, now you change the word gain into fame and then into relatives, you know. Now here's someone with relatives as cause, with relatives as condition, with relatives as reason, transgressors or training percept as undertaken. The virtue that has gain in its limit or relatives in its limit in this case. Huh? And, in the and the rest should be elaborated in the same way. Also, in the answer dealing with the unlimited, it is said, what is the virtue that does not have gain as its limit? Here, someone does not with gain as a cause, with gain as a condition, with gain as a reason, even arouse the thought of transgressing, transgressing a trans training precept as undertaken, then how should he should actually transgress it? The virtue does not have gain as its limit. Okay, and the rest should be elaborated in the same way. So this is the two kinds of limited and unlimited virtue huh? so therefore when we have this limited virtue that means there are attachment or craving involved you look at by the gain fame relatives even limbs and even life or so huh? so so here here when we talk when it's connected with our relatives in this way in this way uh, in this case our mother and then therefore it can be our emotional become very entangled inside that. So therefore there is craving inside that. Not to say that you're taking the eight precept is not unwholesome. It is just tainted. It's tainted by all this attachment and craving. Okay. So this one you have to look into it. So we observe the eight precept. Like for example, when we observe the eight precept. In during in the retreat, then we use that so that we can have a wholesome conditioning in a way that we can able to gain deeper noble cause, noble understanding, noble knowledge, deeper <clears throat> mental development. So those things does not come with gain, does not come with fame, does not come with all these type of things. So it's called unlimited in that sense. Yeah. So you got to be careful when we take up our virtue, when we take up eight precepts or even five precepts, it's not to show off, it's not to have to become um, more pride and so on, not to look down on others also, or others, others have don't have precepts, I have precepts and so on, you know, in this way. So we have to take note of these things. Huh? <clears throat> so be careful of our be careful of our craving, attachment, emotional entanglement. Yeah? <clears throat> Next question. Um, <clears throat> Many times my mother fell asleep while listening to Hokkien Mandarin Dharma talks. Is this proper? And is and will it affect her future behavior or karma? Need Bhante's advice. <clears throat> okay, now. Hey, your mother is almost 90 years old. Oh, you know. <laughs> Not only if she falls asleep in Dhamma talk, uh, hey, some of you here also, also fall asleep. Uh, when I talk until you do not know what I'm talking about already, uh, and then your mind also becomes sien already, then you're also very sleepy and so on. Uh. Not talking about a lady who is almost like 80, over, 80 or almost 90 over years old. You know? Uh, now, here, here, when when we listening to the Dhamma talk, whether there's karma or not, actually I don't really know. 
because I cannot see the future. But why we have always taught in the past, uh, I was taught in the past that uh, that uh, from our my, when I was young with our Dharma teacher, the late our my late Dharma teacher, well, Mr. Lai, who passed away last year. Uh, you know, in order for us to boys and girls to have uh, able to become alert during the Dharma talk, you know, you give us the advice that if you sleep during the Dharma talk, your next life you're going to be reborn as a serpent or a python. So you sleep the whole whole day through, and day after day you're going to go through. <laughs> but whether it's true or not, I. I don't know. Sometimes some devotees they told me about about that type of you know you're reborn in in a certain kind of animal who always like to sleep, uh, just to scare you here and there, like, you know? But I really do not know what type of karma if you just sleep through the dharma talk, uh, because first of all we don't really able to see able to predict what is happen what will able to happen in the future what we know from our cause and effect this karma thing uh, is true from what from the books only uh, so unless you you have the uh, uh, proper psychic power uh, then you can able to actually see into the future what certain action that you do that you can that it can give rise to a certain uh, effects uh, so we really do not know. Okay. So anyway, um, nowadays, uh, of course, if you become sleepy, if you become drowsy, uh, then, well, all being recorded, ma. Uh, yeah, sleepy. The next day, come back and listen again. No. Uh, Sing things like that, no? but really the the thing is that it's very different when you come back to listen again, unless it's really beneficial to you. No? Something like something on a certain aspect of meditation that you need to understand it better. Sometimes you need to readjust. Uh, I mean, sorry, re re. You, you got to play again the the talks to listen again. Then this one. Dharma talk at home also, like right now what we are doing. That when you feel sleepy, uh, you just switch off the Zoom, you go out and then you can sleep already. Nobody can stop you. Uh, but when the retreat comes, uh, different story already. You are sitting in front of the teacher. <laughs> uh, of course, during that time, you know, um, usually Dharma talks in the evening. And during in the retreat session, in retreat, uh, proper physical retreat, residential retreat, uh, then that time you, I mean, the body is very tired. You, know, you strive for the whole day and then when it comes to that 8.30 to give a Dharma talk and you know, the, the, the teachers is still okay, but the yogis, many of them are quite tired. Uh, so quite tired, they listen to the talk, sometimes cannot go in. Uh, they don't know what their teacher is talking about. But they sit with the eyes closed as if like they are meditating like that. <laughs> we know, la, we know. Uh, we know. Because we also do that also. Did that also, I you know, in the past. <laughs> uh, so, we'll see. Uh, so, so this one is, uh, you know, as I said, come back to your question, your mom is uh, already almost at that age. Huh? So the strength is not so much there. Huh? So it's very hard for me to, to, to predict her future and so on. Huh? Uh, so if you just beside your mother, then it will be good that you know if she's there, just push her to wake, up, wake her up and uh, you know, to listen to the talk, to continue the talk if she wants to. You know? But if she cannot, huh, don't force her. Uh, and then perhaps you can able to listen to the talk another time, a better time for her. Hmm? All right. Okay. Okay. This one limited, unlimited. Next one. <clears throat> now, even after much reading and listening to Dhamma talks, 
I still unable to grasp and understand what Nibbana is. So I just put aside the concept of Nibbana, not aspiring to attain Nibbana, and instead let the aspiration for ending of endless wandering and, su and suffering in samsara to be my striving motivation as suffering is very real and clear to me. Please comment. Right? we we'll go to number two in a short while. Huh? <clears throat> now, here... Here we, you see, uh, okay, you, you all got the question already? Okay, let me stop this one. Now, many of us, many of us wish to end samsara, which is the teachings of the Buddha, and the right teachings of the Buddha, and we follow that path. We want to end this cycle of birth and rebirth. But a lot of us, the motivation is also tainted, just like the earlier one, you know, like the first question. It's also tainted. The motivation is tainted. How is it tainted? Hmm. How is it tainted? Now, just now you take a look at that particular question. Huh? It is said that suffering is very real to you. Suffering is very real to you because perhaps that you are at the maybe at the last stage of your life, 70 over years old or 60 over years old. Then when we have at that time uh, we have all kinds of suffering here and there, many various kinds of suffering. And then when you go through this life, of course the suffering feels very, very um strong, and we wish to get out of this cycle of birth and rebirth. Huh? But when we are free from that suffering, uh, let's say, uh, supposing in this life uh, you become young again, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, you become 20 years old again, all your suffering over, that's the boss, you know, which should call high already. Uh. No, you, don't, you don't want to think about going out of samsara already. You want to re enjoy all over again. Uh. Exactly. Just like right now, you say that you want to get out of samsara because of all the suffering. But when you go next life, because you do so much of good deeds, next life you end up in the Tawatimsa, heaven. And then you go enjoy. The moment you were reborn there, you forget about your worldly life. I mean, the the life and you as a human being, you totally give up, then immediately you start to enjoy already. That's why like, all your relatives don't come back and see you, you know? <laughs> They're so happy over there. What for you come back to this uh, terrible human life and you have to grow old and, and, and uh, suffer and so on, you know? So they don't want to come back. So that idea of samsara, Completely, we've forgotten about it. We want to re-enjoy life all over again. So, that is what I meant. Our motivation is motivated by, there's a certain bias of our mind. We only want to get rid of the suffering, but when it comes into happiness, we don't want to get rid of it. We don't want to get rid of the suffering. Well, sorry, we don't get, get rid of the happiness and enjoyment. No? We are biased. A lot of devotees, we don't realize that we are biased. When we talk about the ending of samsara, we are biased on only on the suffering only. Whereas in samsara, oh, sorry, whereas getting out of samsara, that means you have to give up happiness, give up suffering, everything. Everything you have to give up. That's the, that's a, that's the, there's a price, you know, for it. But a lot of times, we only look at suffering. Right? And many times, uh, many times we look at suffering. Right? We don't look at the happiness that that happiness and enjoyment has to be given up to. Hmm? Yeah. You know, when we talk about the 
stages of insight now. Um, we talk about the knowledge on the desire for deliverance, right? The knowledge for the desire of deliverance, a few times I mentioned that at that particular time, the genuine wish to get out of this cycle of birth and rebirth, it's real. It's, it's, really, it's really genuine in, in that sense, it's real. Huh? Because of during that time, the yogi sees suffering and happiness, everything goes into dissolution, goes into cessation, everything, everything just in, truly impermanence, truly, truly uh, dukkha, and truly of all of them also anatta. Uh, he sees that, that again and again, and then that true desire for deliverance only arises. So, a lot of us, when we talk about Nibbana, again, as I said, we come back to that bias of ours that we want to give up suffering. And we want to give up suffering, but we are not thinking of getting, giving up on the happiness. So when it comes to our relatives, when it comes to our parents, come our children, things that makes you happy, you're not, you don't want to give up. You don't want to give up. So, so recheck your own motivation. Whether your motivation is truly want to give up everything, not only just the suffering only. Because right now, the suffering, as you said, is very real to you. So they're very real to you right now. It's very impactful and very strong for you. Huh? So you have to remember, getting out of this samsara, involves giving up on that happiness and all the enjoyment that you this one yeah, yeah. so even the like that next life that you're thinking about enjoyment in the heavenly realm also you you're not so interested about it you only just want to make sure that in this very life as best as you can you want to get rid get out of this suffering and also the happiness of all the conditioned phenomena you want to you want to um, give up give them up and realize nibbana huh? so this is what i'm trying to say huh? the motivation our motivation are also important and you have to look into it huh? so <clears throat> you see yeah, you're striving your motivation because of that suffering. It's not just that. Huh? Let me repeat. It's not just about suffering. It's about everything that you have to give up, including your happiness. Hmm. All right. Then only, uh, then only when things have become clearer to you, then only you strive even more further. Not only just because of suffering. Only. Like, like I've seen this type of meditators, huh? Here, this type of things are in meditator. They come because they want to overcome certain kind of sickness. I've met with meditators in the past, of yogis in the past, and they come because they have certain sickness. And they meditate, meditate, after that, they overcome the sickness, everything, they're happy already, then all you don't see them anymore. Hey! Then long after a long time, you see them. And, hey, how come you don't come back to meditate? Ah, bante, bo eng liao. I got business la. I got chuchu la. I got this la, that la. You no, know, I cannot la. <laughs> because the motivation is wrong. Yeah? So let me and then put it this way also for you all, that if only on suffering only you want to get rid, you want to get rid of the suffering only, and then you won't go far because of when happiness comes in, you already get attached to it. Hmm? Just like you know, just now the example I talk about the sick yogi and then they want to overcome the sickness and the moment they, they finish that, this one, they don't come back for meditation anymore. And the number of people are like that. You know? Number of people. Usually I don't go and force them. Uh, hey, come back, uh, come back, uh, explain to them left, right and center, up and back and so on. Boeing. <laughs> All right. Next question. In the retreat Dhamma talks, uh, in the retreat Dhamma talks, the late Saida Ukundala Upandita 
used to stress that all yogis did strive very hard at the very least to attain the knowledge of mind and matter, which is also termed as chula sotapanna, small or minor sotapanna. Please explain. Okay. Now the word chula sotapanna is being used in the commentary. Yeah? It's used in the commentary. They are not actually sotapanna. No, they are not actually sotapanna. It's just minor, minor, small, yeah? because of the word chula. Now, now the word chula here, chula sotapanna, is not at the uh, first knowledge, but it says exactly is the second knowledge, knowledge of conditioning. Yeah? Now, why is that so? Okay. <clears throat> eh, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Now, why is that so? Yeah. Now, the, the nature of this second insight knowledge uh, is to see that is to see that whether you have uh, um, the necessary capabilities to attain sotapanna and higher enlightenments and like higher attainments or enlightenment. Uh, now, what are the necessary capability? Now, one of it is the wisdom factor. The, the wisdom factor. You know, sometimes we read about the uh, Abhidhamma. You got two roots, uh, you got no roots, you got two roots, you got three roots. Yeah? The three roots one, you have that wisdom factor, non delusion factor. Yeah? Uh, so the third one, that non delusion factor, sometimes some human beings are born without that third factor. Some even doesn't bond with another two factor. No? Uh, the uh, what do you call that? What do you call that? Wisdom. Uh, the other two, never mind. Now, what is important here? What is important here is the third factor, which is the wisdom factor. Wisdom factor here is to able to see that whether in this very life, whether you can able to attain. Sotapanna, if you strive very hard. Now, many of us have that wisdom root. If you can able to understand a lot of us, we can understand the Dhamma by, by, by reflecting on it, not, not only by meditation. You have, you have ability to understand the noble eightfold path, to understand the five precepts, karma and effect, you understand about a number of concepts of anicca, dukkha, anatta, you know, this type of understanding, uh, it already shows that you already have some degree of wisdom factor in you. Uh, now the thing is that when you have that factor in you, are you able, the next thing is that whether you can able to develop that particular wisdom in order to for that sotapanna to achieve the sotapanna yeah? if you don't other words are if you don't strive in vipassana especially if you don't strive you just keep delaying although you have that wisdom you still cannot able to attain the real sotapanna yeah? the real stage of the first stage of enlightenment even you have that condition so many of us have that condition but they don't put in the effort, the right effort in order to attain, uh, to go further. Uh, uh. So this one, this Chula Sotapanna is where the, you can able in the sense that you can able to give up on the idea of a self, a soul, a God and so on, at least on, the, on a temporary basis. Um, because at this knowledge of conditioning, you begin to see the nature of cause effect. Uh, many types of intention, how the intention and the body are related to each other, how they condition each other. So this is the knowledge of conditioning. Chula Sotapana. So when a yogi, when a yogi can ab uh, able to reach this at least the second insight, and then at least we know that uh, that yogi can able to strive further and further hmm? if the yogi wants to. But because many of you do not have 
many of you have the con have the, the capability, the necessary requirement, but the next thing is that you don't put in the effort into it. You don't put in the time into it. And then, of course, so tapana tapli dapat lah, you know. Uh, so you cannot avail to attain that one. So, so yes, you have to strive very hard. Yes, you got to strive very hard. Yeah, pass through. Don't worry about the chula so tapana and so on. Yeah? So this one is just, just to know that whether the yogi has that ability or not. Yeah? Because a lot of times, in the past. <clears throat> And the past, sometimes there are so many monks comes in into the monkhood. You, know? you train them, train and train and train and train. No matter how strive, how hard they strive, they cannot even even attain, even reach to the first knowledge of insight of mind and matter, or even the, the second knowledge also. Uh, so they try. Then, then, then we all know that that yogi may not have that capability. They may not have that inborn capability in that sense hmm? okay so this is for for this type of terms uh, yeah? the, the term is just for to just to check because so many people are coming into i mean in the past uh, so many are doing the meditation uh, uh, at least the teacher knows uh. all right next one <clears throat> okay one day, may I know what at what stage of insight is a yogi at? When he notes the rising of, of the abdomen, he feels the sensation of tightness. At the same time, during this rising, got hardness and vibration sensation arising and disappearing also. Okay. Usually, usually, uh, not, not usually, sorry, all the time, I don't go and tell yogis what stage you are in. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Although I teach here, when I teach, uh, I, I can able to describe a lot of things about the development of the insight. Yeah? Although I can do that. But when an individual yogi comes to me and exactly want to know exactly where they are, usually I really, I old, even I know where you are, but I don't tell you where you are. Yeah. I'll just tell you that continue practice. <laughs> continue practice. It doesn't matter. Just continue practice. Uh, sometimes I do not know where you are. But I know that you are it at the right path and you are not at the wrong path. You are doing rightly and you are not doing wrongly. Because you are still watching the observation, um, for example, like that, like this case, uh, you can able to notice the tightness and so on. We know that the yogi is doing rightly, uh, correctly, but just just that you give me that statement, I really do not know what yeah what the yogi is going through. So for me, it does not matter which stage the yogi is in. It does not matter at all, because sometimes the yogi. When they explain certain things, they only explain a certain part during the interview, let's say, you know. And then tomorrow they explain some other things again. And then some, sometimes I have to know the yogi, sometimes I have to take a few talk, a few interviews in order to know uh, where the yogi is at. A few interviews, because sometimes the, the experiences uh, is just a little bit here, what they experience. After that, a little bit there, and then after that, what a little bit here, and then a little bit there. A few other days later, huh, then I know. Uh, at least I got a bigger picture of what the yogi is at and what she, they are doing. And then that, that one, even I know, but I don't tell you. But I know that the yogi is at the right path. I know that the yogi is striving, even though I don't have to go and sit and go and look at the yogi. Yeah? We, know, we know if the yogi is doing well or not. Yeah? So just by, the, just by one description, one line, you normally we don't know what stage the yogi is in, but we know that the yogi is doing right. Yeah? So, so sometimes I really do not know. I really do not know. Yeah? Just, be, just because you see a little bit of hardness, a bit of vibration coming and pee pee pop pop, pee pee pop pop. Uh, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, even, even the Mahasi Sayadaw, 
<clears throat> when he wrote so many books about vipassana he talks about the progress of insight and many of the books you know i got you have this progress of this vipassana now his job also is just to inform you to inform you so that at least you can at least you know that you're in the right path at least you know in your in the right path but the thing is that with a lot of yogis is that when you know about the insights and the knowledge of insight usually they want to compare where they are uh, they want to compare yeah uh, they want to compare themselves with, with the book or oh, where they are am i this one and uh, am i not uh, uh, at one time uh, one yogi during in the retreat uh, say bante bante can i have can i spare a longer uh, interview session with me i say okay okay maybe she, she or he want to explain a little bit more things yeah then when it comes in when it comes to the interview uh, bante why uh, why you don't why don't you give us to tell us where we are in our meditation during in our meditation retreat and you talk about all the insight here and there but you don't let us know exactly where we are now when i go to other teachers uh, or other side doors oh they tell you oh now you are the fourth inside oh now you are the fifth inside oh now you are the second inside but why are uh, the only one that now uh, you don't tell us anything although you can speak all about it <laughs> uh, because here we are not trying to endorse you or anything you know oh i lose the hummy inside that one hummy inside that one hummy inside is not that at all uh. it's about your own personal own development a lot of yogis when they then the 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 teacher uh, when the teacher uh no verify them to be that particular stage huh? oh uh, the yogi's ego huh? <laughs> yeah ego, you're coming and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, the ego well uh, because you can during in the retreat now uh, you got nothing for you to hold on only you only got your insight and your practice to hold on that, that you hold dear to all of you other things are uh, it's not important to you when you are striving so they forget that 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 knowledge that development uh, can become a source of your craving and your ego and you think that you are better than other people because that teacher uh, endorse or verify me to that particular stage uh, and not only that only not only at this one but those are uh, also ask the teacher to verify at uh, whether enlightenment or not enlightenment and then sometimes i hear that certain teachers verify the yogis to be enlightened oh wow uh, why side dog say that i'm already wholesale or enlightened now then after three months later go haywire and the whole mind then the teacher want to take back the words mana <laughs> you know you are you are toying with people's spiritual progress huh? if let's say uh, i were to tell you which stage you are in and i make mistake you overestimate your practice because the teacher says so then that means uh, you are and at times most probably you're going going towards a wrong path uh, or wrong overestimation then the pride and ego all pop up uh, so that's why for me i find that you will finally come to know for yourself if you practice enough if you want to practice that little bit, little bit, even to know what stage you are, not necessary. You will come to know for yourself what stage you are in later on. When things become clearer, more, uh, your practice becomes much more significantly developed, then all these things uh, will, will come to you later on. Just practice more and be patient. Uh, it will come to you. So don't have to worry about 
what stage you are in. What stage you are in that, for example, if you are here, you are at the right path. You are the right noting. You are doing it correctly. And that is the most importantly important one because that if you don't overthink, don't over underestimate, don't overestimate, don't underestimate your practice. You just note what is in front of you. Just note, nah, don't overthink. Just note only, and then you will progress. But if you can overthink and so on, that will be your hindrance. That it will stop the meditation. Huh? So, so my job as a teacher, as an instructor, is to make sure that you don't go at the wrong path. I'm not here to endorse you. I'm not here to verify whether you are enlightened or not. This is not my job. This is the Buddha's job. You are 2,500 years late. <laughs> that is not my job. My job is to make sure that you just keep on going. You think that you are Sotapanna? Keep on meditating. Keep on striving. Arahan <laughs> Abhikaogo. You know, you just keep going on it. Just keep going and going and going until you lie down flat at your coffin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's how all about it. My job is to make sure that you are doing it rightly. My job is not to endorse you here and there. Yeah? So you don't have to know which stage, yeah? what stage of insight or what stage of whatever it is. Just to know that you are doing right now. For here, you are doing right because you are noticing the ultimate reality. You are noticing the right objects. You are noticing the satipatthana objects. Then perfect. Well, good. So keep on going. That is my answer. <laughs> huh? Okay. All right. Next one. Next question. <clears throat> now, these this two questions, I have to go together. Huh? These two questions uh, have to go together. Slightly smaller a bit. Uh, then it can fit in. All right. Hey, I have to move this, my, my screen here. Okay. Is absorbing in annihilation of all mind and matter the same as cessation of mental and physical phenomena? Okay. Now the next, this one. In our weekly discussion of the Manual of Insight by Mahasi Saidao, Chapter 5, The Experience of Nibbana, page 263, Saidao was, was discussing entering fruition and instructed the meditator to determine the period for absorption in advance or the determination to enter the friction quickly or to be absorbed for a long time should be made before beginning to note. Okay. Does the med meditator have the power to determine the length of the period of their friction absorption to last? Or can Bhante elaborate on the various aspects uh, for this happen, such as the yogi skill? I think... Uh, 50% of you, you all uh, don't understand what the, <laughs> what the question is about. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> anyway, anyway. All right, let's us go to the first question first. Huh? Because both of it, both of it in a way that they are connected. Huh? The way they are connected. Absorbing in the annihilation of mind and matter, cessation, cessation of mental and phys physical phenomena. Now, it's hard to, for me to understand what is, the, what is actually you use the annihilation of mind and matter. And when, whether the cessation of mental and physical phenomena. Sometimes these two, these two things are. Uh, it can mean the same thing. It can mean the same thing, depending on who is the author. Sometimes it can mean totally different things, but very connected. Different things are very connected. Okay? Now, all right. Okay, lend me this one. Huh? 
friction absorption. This is called pala samapati. Hmm? Pala samapati, okay. And then you have a cessation, cessation, uh, cessation, cessation, absorption. Uh, let's say. This is Niroda, Niroda Samapati. Hmm. Cessation friction and friction absorption, it's very, there are different, whereas this friction absorption, uh, Nibbana is your object. Whereas cessation of absorption, Nibbana is not your object, actually. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. I'm not sure whether, which one is which one when it comes to the translation of that English word. But in the Pali word, it's very clear. There's Pala Samapati, there's Niroda Samapati. This one, for all uh, all noble ones can achieve this pala samapati, and and this friction absorption uh, is going to connect it with the question down there. Yeah? Whereas this one is only for anagami and arahant with arahant with uh, eight jhanas huh? with eight jhanas noble ones not necessary they have eight jhanas all noble ones can able to achieve pala samapati which is friction absorption huh? if you reach the first stage of enlightenment you already can able to go into friction absorption okay now whether your friction absorption uh, is it cessation of mental and physical phenomena? Hard to say. Whereas, whereas Niroda Samapati, here is that na? Niroda Samapati, it's in a way, is annihilation of mind and body, which is in a way, I think that it is Niroda Samapati for your first one. But again, you use the word cessation again, but Normally, English they use the word for niroda. They use the word cessation rather than annihilation. Yeah. Because annihilation can means like it's thought, like you know they they try to not use the word annihilation in the sense of it can be connected with the annihilation view. Yeah. Sus what uh, and that annihilation view. So so they try to not use the word annihilation so here uh, first, first friction absorption is when you reach uh realize nibbana okay when you realize nibbana okay when you realize nibbana first time when you touch nibbana or when you see nibbana or when you realize nibbana then nibbana becomes your object of your meditation but it is no more anicca dukkha or anicca nupasana already yeah? because you are not seeing things arising and passing away so you only see nibbana as an object as an object because the friction consciousness able to look at it but for the first time you only last you maybe one or two seconds and then already you come out already you cannot last long inside f during the first time but you already eradicate your defilements by the path consciousness uh, uh, the path consciousness has done its job you don't even know that what you don't even realize that it has done its job because it's it's just latent defilements only. okay now so friction absorption all noble ones can do it now cessation uh, Absorption in cessation, niroda samapati. Because the word niroda, we use the word cessation. Samapati, 
we use the word this one. Now this one is for Anagami and Arahan. Now this with eight jhanas. Now during this time, uh, when it comes into Niroda Samapati, they have to go through one um, first jhana, come out of the first jhana, go into Pala Samapati. Come out of the Pala Samapati, go into the second jhana. Come out of the second jhana, go into the Pala Samapati again. Come out of the second jhana, enter into the third jhana. Then, after come out of the third jhana, enter into Pala Samapati. Come out of the Pala Samapati, enter into the fourth jhana. Ah, like that, lah. like that, like that, like that. Until the eighth jhana. So, until the eighth jhana, then he, when he completely gives this one, then everything, all mind and matter, cease. Completely cease. As if like the whole body is dead. But they are not dead. No? They are not dead yet. Yeah. Uh, so the cessation absorption, that one is even more... It's, it's if you have that jhana. Uh, um, anyway, all of them... Uh, yeah. Anyway, this, this one is a bit more difficult for us to understand. No? Uh, what is important right now is this friction absorption because you may not have all the jhanas. So most most probably, if you become a noble one, then you can able to achieve friction absorption. Okay, so for your question, uh, for your question is absorbing and as I say, so it's very difficult for me to know what is the Pali translation. Uh, if they have Pali translation, then that will be good. Uh, uh, okay, all right. Now the next one, uh, as I said over here, now in the Manual of Insight, Page 263, I don't have the, this one, but I know, I, I know where you have because let, let me, uh, let me, uh, sorry, let me share with you the, this one, huh? Kindle. Now, in the, in the you're, you're talking about experience of Nibbana. This is what the, what the Mahasi Saido's book, yeah? Uh, how, how phenomenal of, he tried to describe everything, like, you know. Okay, so now, entering friction. You want to know entering friction and how long can you last there? How how can you go inside there and so on, right? You you want to we want to know about that. So we are going to talk about entering on friction. How to go in into pala samapati? Huh? I wonder. Kong Liao, the more I talk, uh, the more pasika, the more mind is, <laughs> the more entangled your mind become. <laughs> because it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit technical. Right? It's going to be technical, but I try to make it as simple as possible for you all. Yeah? Okay, okay. Now, now, here is quite, the 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 Mahasi Sada explained quite a quite a lot, and not not too long. It's just a little bit. You know, only the words are big only. It's quite quite easy to read. Maybe five or ten minutes you can finish reading. But to un truly understand it, it take you a lifetime. Or cannot this lifetime cannot finish the next life again. <laughs> to understand this, all right. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to try to answer your question over here. Huh? Okay, let us may, let me sh share back the the question again. Uh, now, here, this Mahasi Saido says that when you entering friction, that means you are entering into pala samapati, uh, you are instructed to determine the period of absorption in advance, the period of to enter the friction quickly, uh, how long you want to be absorbed into it. Okay, now. This is mentioned. This is from a Houston community, meditation community. Now, 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 let me let me make it. And it's not simple, also, but uh, there's what we call in samatha jhana. This also they 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 talk about how we enter jhana in the samatha jhana. It's also the same, almost the same thing, all right? Now in samatha jhana. 
when one reach jhana, first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, one must try to have this five mastery. Okay, you must be able to do a five mastery before they say that you can go to the second jhana. Hmm? Because second jhana. Now, what is the mastery of the jhana? Because when you understand that this thing, you will see that uh, in vipassana absorption also, they are also parallel also. All right? Okay. Mastery in adverting. Now, mastery in adverting in jhana, that means uh, ability to distinguish various mental factors, mental states after emerging, for example, the vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ekagata, even mindfulness and so on. You can able to distinguish this mental stage. Now, mastery in adverting is not easy like, you no, know, sometimes yogis thought that, uh, even samatha yogis thought that, uh, oh, they come out from samatha, Jhana only, uh, immediately you can see which one is Vitaka, which one is Vichara, which one is Piti. No, you cannot. You cannot because these are mental states. Uh, you need to have a strong wisdom power in order for it to distinguish it clearly. It is not as easy as you think it is. Even you read a book, uh, oh, first jhana, first jhana got five mental factors, vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ekagata. You know? Wow, you thought that just come out like that. No, not that easy. You come out also, you still mong cha cha. <laughs> still do not know whether what is going on, but you had a jhana. La, you know? But after coming out, it's not easy for you to differentiate the mental stage mental you know you're able to distinguish here and there even when you are doing vipassana also the same thing some a lot of yogi cannot even differentiate which one is mindfulness and which one is concentration also or which one is the wisdom factor also all everything else all, all coming in even though we are supposed to able to distinguish them but it's not as easy yeah. So it's not as, not easy to do this even the first mastery of even in jhana. Yeah? Now number two, mastery in attaining now, the ability to enter quickly. Uh, quickly here means uh, that at the wish of his intention, he can already go into jhana already. That is how quickly. Yeah. Then in the in the text, uh, in the text that when a person able to an, attain a jhana, it's like for example, like the Mongalana for all the chief disciples, Mongalana, Maha Mongalana is the fastest of all. It's the fastest of that's that's why his ability in the spiritual, all the psychic power, uh, he is the best, you know, in that sense. Uh. So so attaining it quickly, you know that once you're able to attain the jhana, that particular jhana, then you repeat the jhana again and again and again and again and again until you are so skillful that you can anytime uh, you sit down, the moment you sit down, adjust everything, you tell yourself, masuk jhana, you already masuk already. You already enter already. Uh. No need to wait, 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 wait until the in breath, out breath comes. Everything they already, everything is there. They can able to enter it very quickly. So this is mastery of entering. Yeah? They can they can go in very quickly. Yeah? If if you do proper meditation, also you could also you you can do that too. Now mastery in resolving is that your ability to maintain the jhana as long as one wish. You want to enter and you want to this one. So you make a aditana, you make a determination. Eh? You make a de de determination that you want to stay for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, two hours, three hours, one hour, 45 minutes, okay. one hour, 45 minutes, and 35 seconds also can. <laughs> You can determine, you know, you can ability for that you can able to determine it exactly to what you want. You know? uh, so this one it needs a lot of training. 
So you even you after jhana, don't think that uh, you can sekali uh, you dapat your jhana already. Oh, you can go in for five hours and sit and then don't come up. No, you cannot do that. You this one needs to be trained further and further and further. Uh, uh. Number four, mastery in emerging. The ability to emerge exactly at predetermined time or due to certain conditions. Predetermined time, that means uh, you before you enter into the jhana, then you already fix, okay, I want to stay there for 1 hour, 45 minutes and 35 seconds. Then, at that time, ding! Mentally, you know, not, not, not your phone or your alarm clock. Yeah. Mentally, at that time, you are so skillful, you can come out from that. Now you can come out very quickly at, at the right time. Or as a certain condition, maybe because while you are doing jhana, then something happened externally, then you know it immediately the mind comes out from it. Also, this on, on a certain condition. You can able to come in, enter, go out again, muscle in the uh, until he becomes so skillful. Now, mastery in reviewing is the similar in with number one, but right now you see this vitaka or vichara as something flaws or gross or gross. Uh, it, it's not so pleasant anymore. Now, when you're able to see it as flaw or, or something is very, very rough in that, in that sense, you know, it's not settled in the mind, then the mind ready to get, uh, ready to let go of the first jhana, let's say, now he wants to enter, he wants to practice further in order to gain the second jhana. So what he, the yogi will do is that he must not able to go jhana, he must mentally predetermine, no, mentally make aditana again to give up on that jhana and then start again with the in-breath, out-breath, if you're doing anapanasati, in breath, out breath, and then all the uh, nimitta comes up and then goes into second jhana again. Uh, and he goes to go through all this pastery all over again. Uh, so it's simple. Uh. <laughs> now, parallel to the meditation of vipassana, and this time when you comes into the determine the enter the friction quickly and so on this is also ex in a way they are very parallel to the jhana also and they are very parallel in the sense that this time the object here is the nibbana this is supra mundane whereas the jhana is still mundane eh? but you do the same exercise the same skill mm, you exercise the same skill now here, when you want to um, enter the friction quickly, as long as you, this one, after you coming out from the first time you see Nibbana, uh, the first time you see Nibbana, after the path friction, then uh, you, you see the Nibbana. But once you come out from the, that Nibbana, uh, you, you, you emerge from that Nibbana the first time, when you come out from it, then the knowledge of arising and passing away will start to, will restart again. That means anicca nupasana will start again. Now, this time when the anicca nupasana starts again, everything becomes so slow again you now, very slow. Before you enter Nibbana that time, things was going in the like speed is so fast you know like uh, you are as if like you are driving 20, 200 miles an hour then after that coming out of jhana then you go you're crawling at 10 kilometer an hour very slow <laughs> you know it's like suddenly break you know then you feel the slowness of it but nevertheless the slowness of it again is about Sing into the anicca, dukkha, anatta repeatedly again and again. But right now, when you are able to see all this anicca, dukkha, anatta, all the insight repeat itself again. Uh, uh, that time, uh, you know uh, which stage you are in. Uh, that time, because it's more, more clearer. Okay, when you come to your 
when they come to that particular insight, when they come to the knowledge of arising and passing away after enlightenment, eh, then when you look back in your past practice, then ah, that time I was doing like that, nah, then you realize that that was that, that period of time that I had that particular knowledge or insight. Then as you go become more clearer, then you when you look back in your past, you remember back into your past practice, then you, you know that when I had that insight, when I was that, then you can chronologically know where your progress is. So before you're able to attain first stage of sin, uh, first stage of enlightenment, uh, so you don't worry about that because after enlightenment, uh, you got all the time for you to know what is happening. So don't worry, Ming Kin Chong. So just be, just meditate until enlightenment. After that, everything will be shown to you, and, uh, uh, as long as you don't not, not dead yet. Uh. <laughs> so therefore, when it becomes like that, it's slow, and then then the yogi has to keep on striving. Go, keep on walk, sit, walk, sit, walk, sit, walk, sit, walk, sit. Then the the progress of the insight will start building up again, building up, building up, building up until again he can re able to re reabsorb into the fruition. Now, it, when he able to go into the fruition again, this time because of the training, the time that you able to stay with the nibbana, stay with the realization of nibbana, it gets longer and longer and longer. It's not so easy for in the beginning part for you to determine how long you want. You know? It's only after a while that you begin to meditate, you get the you get the taste of nibbana and also the, the taste of practicing as a noble one, then practice is so much more better. You then that time you try again and again until you achieve a sufficient um, stage of mind that you have become very strong, powerful, mentally very balanced, then, then you re-enter into Nibbana again. Uh, this time, before you re-enter, you make a determination that you want to enter into it for, let's say, 15 minutes. Then you absorb for it in the 15 minutes. You want to, after that, you want to determine 20 minutes, then absorb 20 minutes. Huh? Now, this time also, when you want to absorb into this one, it's also good that you can use various bodily positions for you to do it. Not just only sitting, but also in the standing also. You, you're doing standing, go into the absorption and absorb for 15 minutes or stand there for one hour. Yeah? Stand there for one hour, just realize on Nibbana. <laughs> Isn't it? How, how nice. Yeah? Uh, stand there for one hour. Stand there one and a half hours. You do that. Uh. Now you go to the toilet. Uh. You go to the toilet. Okay. Then you, you, you pass water. Now, in the middle of passing water, you want to go enter into Nibbana. You also can enter into Nibbana la, while you do your business. La. <laughs> Anything you can do that. You become, you become like, you determine to enter. That means uh, any, you are training yourself, training in many ways, whether you are eating while you are eating at that time. This time it's not just arising and passing away. This time is to enter into Nibbana, to see the Nibbana while you're eating. Then how is the whole movement and everything is like? Then here you try to enter, then to quickly come out because you cannot enter for one hour and then you don't eat. Ma. You cannot, you just enter, come out again, then makan and then you continue. Then all, you keep on training and doing and doing until you can able to are so good at entering Whenever you want to, that means you can able to enter enter it quickly. That you already predetermined that you want to stay there for one hour, then you come out from it, then you want to go in again, come out from it, and so on. So you, bec you become very skillful in entering and coming out of this Pala Samapati. Yeah? Now, not only that, not only that, you also become skillful in the 16th insight knowledge because this. This uh, fruition knowledge uh, is the number 15. Path is number 14. But the 
reviewing knowledge, that you review your past defilements and so on, you also become very clear. That, that timer is like a mastery in adverting that you know that which defilement is already eradicated and which defilement is still not, which defilement are still not eradicated. Um, you know that the first stage, okay, I eradicated, I already eradicated the skeptical doubt. How do you know you erad eradicate the skeptical doubt and not others? Then does the knowledge seeing that you able have already eradicated that skeptical doubt already go into cessation. Others, like your sensual desire, still go into arising and passing away. Do you know it for yourself? That means you can able to distinguish the various mental stage, but this time you distinguish of which one eradicated, which one is still there. Hmm? Whereas in the in the jhana one uh, is only you know that it's there and uh, nothing eradicated because this is jhana ma. Uh, so it's the same thing, you know. It's the same thing. So you know which one, which one is eradicated, which one is not. So you re kind of review the whole thing all over again. Uh. Uh, then <clears throat> mastery in attaining. Just now, as I said, once you are so used to enter into it. Anytime you must train yourself, whether you are lying down, whether you are standing up, whether you are walking, whether you are sitting, how how to go in into how to go in into nibbana, how to realize into nibbana at at the moment's notice. Uh, let's go in already. go in already. Mastery in resolving. Okay, until you become so good at it, then again you stretch your mind as long as you want. Maybe one hour, two hours, three hours. Uh, emerging again as at the right time you want to emerge from that. This one again is the same thing like what you do in the samatha. Uh, uh, until the coming to this one, the fifth one, uh, until you get fed up of nibbana. <laughs> yeah, you get fed up of getting in the first stage of. Uh, enlightenment ready you don't want that first stage of enlightenment ready. but this time you make a determination you want to go to the higher level of enlightenment so what do you do you make a resolve not to go in into nibbana you 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 make the resolve not to advert into it not to attain it not to resolve it you don't want to go into it anymore your determination your aditana is to see go back to seeing anicca dukkha anatta arising falling sitting touching nothing 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 all over again to re-strengthen the anicca dukkha anatta perception all this perception have to be re-strengthened again until you finally attain the second level of in uh, second level of enlightenment then after that you redo everything the mastery again Oh, bo <laughs> eng yeah. Well, I say it's a bit confusing. Uh, yeah. Most of the time, we talk about until enlightenment, and until before enlightenment or enlightenment name. But when it comes into enlightenment, after enlightenment, there are also various ways that we can describe it. But who would like to listen? You listen for 15 minutes and after that, you don't know what I'm talking about already. <laughs> it's very confusing already after that. Yeah? But I'm trying to make it as simple as it is. So the Samatha in this adverting, we also have this, no it's the same knowledge as when you come into the Vipassana in the sense of when one gets this, one gets uh, enlightenment and emerging and resolving and attaining and all these things. Yeah? <clears throat> so, so these are all training. Finally, it's all training and training and more training on it. Yeah? It does not come immediately after your sotapana. It comes after sotapana, you train and train and train to attain until this, until you finally fed up with all this first stage of enlightenment. Then you determine for the second stage of enlightenment. So you keep pushing further. Yeah? Yeah. So, that's about it about tonight's talk. Yeah? So it's not easy for the last 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 two this one. Huh? So hopefully you all can be able to understand. All right. <clears throat> now, um, what else?
So I got nothing else. I said the next the next one will be my retreat starting already next. Uh, this coming week, this coming Sunday will be start on uh, this coming Sunday. Yes, we'll be starting the retreat already. And um, as I said, next Zoom talk will be in the Vesa Eve over here. Same ID, same password. Then we have a talk during that time. I said the time is not determined yet. Yeah, you wait lah. until there's notice come out in the Facebook. Uh, this one. Yeah? Okay. And by the way, I'm in a Buddhist Wisdom Center right now. I'm not in Peace House anymore. I'm in PJ right now. Yeah? 